Hello, welcome to this Price a Job tutorial. In this video, we'll be discussing the new Steel Beams module in Price a Job. The new Steel Beams module is located here under the Structural Members category. It is intended to replace the older Metal Beams modules. Previously, you would be required to create a separate module for each different type of beam that your project required. However, now, with the new Steel Beams module, you have the flexibility of either choosing the specific beams that you require, or using the complete steel beams module for all beams combined. Let's create a module and take a look. With this new module, you can combine all different types of beams just by selecting the type of beam that you require. For example, if we require a universal column, we can just select the column size, and specify the lengths we need. For example, if we needed two pieces of 5 meters each, we would simply input here 10 meters, and Price of Job will calculate the cost of these materials. Next, if we wanted to add a channel beam, we just select the appropriate size, input the length required in meters, and the costs are added to our materials total. And let's also add a square hollow section to this list, and let's say that this one shall be 150 square by 6 kilos, we will select that, and input the length that we require. So the main advantage of this new module is that we can now add all these different types of beams in the same module. Previously we would have required a module here for universal columns, another module for parallel flange channels, and another module for square hollow sections. So it's easy to see that this is a very convenient improvement. In addition to calculating the cost of the beam materials, Price a Job also automatically calculates the cost of labor for installation. As a default, these calculations are based on an hourly rate per ton. The default installation rate is stored here under the Settings tab in the Steel Beam's main stage. If we select that, we can see that the installation rate in hours per ton is set at a default of 70. For this particular project, if we'd like to override that amount, we can do so here and we'll see that our labor total automatically adjusts. Let's go ahead and change that back to the default. And rather than adjusting this project individually, we can change the actual default rate itself within our company library. To access that, we simply click on the Company tab, and under Resources, we select Labor. To quickly find the appropriate labor type, we can use the search field here and enter Beam. Then we can select the appropriate description, in this case erecting and setting in position a metal beam, and we can modify the default rate from 70 hours per ton to 110. When we alter the default rate, the labor item is highlighted in yellow to let us know that we have overridden the default numbers. Now if we go back to our estimate, if we take a look at our steel beams, we can see that the installation rate is still set at 70 hours per ton. That's because this module was created before we adjusted the default rate. If we were to create a new module now, and view the installation rate, we'll see that the new setting is now set to 110,000 hours per ton. So clearly I've made an error. Let's go back to our company tab, back into our labor listings, we will search for beam, and you can see I set the hours at 110 hours per kilogram as opposed to a ton. So we will set this new default to 0.11 hours per kilogram. Now we can go back to our estimate, create a new project, select steel beams, steel beams module, create a module, and now when we check our installation rate, we can see that it is correct at 110 hours per ton. We'll just tidy up our space here by deleting these extra modules. And for this current module that we're working on, we'll leave the installation rate at 70 hours per ton. So based on this installation rate and this hourly rate, our cost of labor will be 1538 pounds. As an important part of this calculation, Price a Job is also automatically calculating the total weight of the steel beams. 
which is shown here under the steel beams stage. Likewise, it also calculates the total surface area of the steel beams, which is useful in calculating finishing costs. You have options for primed, galvanized, or painted finishes. You can also select under the settings how many coats you would like to apply. You can also adjust the primer coverage, which is typically indicated on the primer container. The default is 8 square meters per liter. If for any reason you need to adjust the total surface area, you can do that by adjusting the surface area here. If for the finishes you choose instead of primed, painted, then under the settings we have options to apply various coats of primer, undercoat, and gloss, and you can adjust these as needed. And notice that as we make the changes, our description automatically updates to show that we are applying two coats of gloss. We can also show that we are applying one coat of undercoat, and applying one coat of primer. And again, we can specify the area of coverage, as sometimes there may be a thicker paint that will only cover, say for example, 4 square meters per liter. We also have the option to add fire protection to our beams. And this is where we would apply intumescent paint to provide either 30, 60, 90, or 120 minutes of fire protection. We can select how many coats we want to apply, and as well under the settings, set the coverage for the intumescent paint. The manufacturer's recommended is 2 square meters per liter. Next, we can add pad stones. And to do that, we would just select the pad stones component here, and we can select whatever pad stones we need. And then for each of those, set the quantity. And the price of job system will automatically calculate the cost of the cement and the installation time. Now in this example, we have selected the exact specific beams that we require. However, oftentimes at the quotation stage, we may not know the exact requirements, and we may have to wait for the structural engineer to provide exact sizes of the beams. So in that case, we can convert this steel beams module here under the main stage to a steel allowance. Or if we're starting the module from scratch, under the structural members category, we can simply select steel allowance here. For example, perhaps in this instance, we are having our steel supplied by another contractor. And let's say that their charge is 2,500 pounds for all the beams. We can adjust that here and then input the estimated labor time. Let's say 80 hours. So when we send this quotation to the customer, it will show a steel beams allowance of 2,500 pounds plus VAT. And because we're only dealing with an allowance here, we can explain to the customer that this is an estimate, and that if the structural engineer comes back with a requirement for larger beams, then the price may be different. You can also, from the main stage drop-down, select specific beams. So for example, universal column. Here you can input how many pieces you require, and the total length. Let's say two pieces of 5.5 meters. This will show a bit more detail, including the weight per meter, the beam weight, and the total weight of all beams. You can also use the sketch pane to see the cross section and zoom in to see the detailed specs, including the height, width, and thickness of the beam. You can also change the beam type to see various other properties. Price of Job utilizes a series of common short codes, for example, a universal column is code UC, a universal beam is code UB, and a parallel flange channel would be code PFC. The first two numbers refer to the height and width of the beam, and the last numeral refers to the weight in kilograms per linear meter, or how heavy this beam is. You can toggle between the sketch pane tabs to see either the cross section or the 3D view. You'll notice that the descriptions are all automatically generated, including the supply and installation of the specific beam type, the steel finish to be applied, as well as any intumescent paint. Similarly, the pad stones are also itemized. And if we make any changes to our steel finish stage, we can see that the description is automatically updated, as is the stage below, which automatically all calculates the materials for finish, primer, red oxide, all labor, and the night's description.
If you wish, you can simply deselect the pad stones, fire protection, or steel finish stages to remove those items from the estimate. If you wish to separately itemize the beams for different areas of the project, for example, perhaps we're constructing a garage and an extension, we can rename the beam stage, for example, beams for garage, and then add a second module with a steel allowance. And we can title this module steel allowance for extension. This will separate the components for the garage and the extension so the customer can see which beams are for which part of the project. Additionally, your steel beams may require some connections. So to do that, you can go back to the structural members category and select pad stones and connections. And here we have a connection module. And here you'll find connections such as splice connections or two beams bolted together. And you can add that here as a sub module. Or sometimes you might have timber block, filling one side of the beam with timber to take fixings like joist hangers. And you can select this from timber beams. We'll cover these in more detail in another tutorial, but for now that should point you in the right direction. And that is a brief summary of the new steel beams module. Thank you for using Price a Job.